Chapter 18, Section 3 is over cloud types and precipitation. Cloud classification scheme that we use today is largely based on the work of Luke Howard. He developed the cloud classification system in 1802 to 1803. These are some of his original drawings of clouds. You can see nothing really has changed. Clouds are clouds. He used Latin terms to describe how they look as he was naming them because in the biological field, that's what we use are Latin terms because it's a dead language and it's not going to change. So as he was naming them, we use the word stratus when we describe something that comes in a layer. We use cumulus because it says heap. A cirrus cloud, have, they look like curls of hair, and nimbus is violent rain. So when we combine the four basic cloud types, for example, a nimbostratus, that means that we have rain clouds that are layered. A cumulonimbus cloud is a rain cloud that has significant vertical development or growth. In the late 1880s, Abercrombie and Hildebrandsen defined four primary groups of clouds. They were broken up into their height levels. The first group were the low level clouds, the middle level clouds, then the high level, and then the final was these vertically developed clouds that didn't really fit. They started at the low level, but they reached all the way to the high. So they had to have their own grouping. We're going to talk about each one individually. So our high clouds, they form above 20,000 feet. They're almost exclusively ice crystal clouds. There's very little moisture available up there, so they're very thin clouds. The first type of high cloud we'll talk about is a cirrus cloud. They're commonly abbreviated with the CI. These are the most common high clouds. They're very thin and wispy, and they move from west to east where we're at. They indicate the wind direction at that elevation. They generally will tell you that the weather is going to be fair and pleasant, so they're nothing to be concerned about. The next type of high cloud is called a cirrocumulus. These are small and rounded. They come in little white puffs. They're generally isolated, or they could be in rows. If they're isolated, sometimes they look like little piles of sand in the sky. If they come in rows, they are rippled, and they sometimes will look like the scales of a fish. They generally cover most of the sky. So when you look up, they're going to cover a lot of sky. A lot of times we see them in the winter here. And there's a picture of, you can see the, the rippled scales of a fish appearance. So that would be something that we commonly see in the winter time here. Here's another image of some cirrocumulus clouds. Now you might notice that the entire sky doesn't look all the same because there's multiple types of clouds. Generally when we look at the sky and we say, oh, there's a whole bunch of high clouds up here. Those are cirrocumulus clouds. There's the rose, there's our little fish scales, but then we've also got some lower level clouds. So just keep that in mind. The next type of high cloud that we have is a cirrostratus. These are very thin. They're sheet-like high clouds. They're very thin and they allow the sun and the moon to shine through them. They will generally produce a halo effect around the sun or the moon. And these are a good predictor of rain or snow within the next 12 to 24 hours. So it's nice to see, you see that halo around the moon or you see the halo around the sun. You can guess there's probably going to be a storm. And there's another picture of the halo. This brings us to our middle level clouds. Those middle level clouds, the bases or the bottoms, start somewhere around 6,500 feet and they stretch all the way up to 23,000 feet. These are made up of a mixture of water droplets and ice crystals. These are generally a little bit thicker clouds and they can sometimes dim the sun. The first one we'll look at are these alto cumulus clouds. They're generally gray and puffy masses. They can come in waves or bands. These can also be seen as like an overcast cloud, so they're going to take up big chunks of the sky. Sometimes they look like little castles, and when that happens, we call those castellanus clouds. These are a good precursor of summer afternoon thunderstorms. So if you see these developing and you're at the pool, it's probably a pretty good sign that you're going to have to leave. The next middle level cloud we'll see is an altostratus cloud. These come in a blue to gray color and they will generally cover the entire sky. They give it kind of a, a milky, watery look. 
The sun is very dimly visible. It looks like one big thin blanket of clouds covering the sky. When these are covering the sky, you won't see any shadows on the ground. And they will form ahead of storms that produce widespread rain. So if you've got a day or two of rain coming, generally you'll see some alto stratus. And there's another picture during the daytime of some alto stratus, that, that bluish color to the sky. Next we have our low clouds. These cloud bases can begin anywhere below 6,500 feet. They're comprised of water droplets mostly. These are the ones that are responsible for giving us those gloomy looking skies, especially in winter time. The first type are the stratocumulus. These are the low lumpy clouds. They will generally appear in rows or patches. The blue sky is sometimes visible between those patches, but these are generally precipitation free types of clouds, so we're not going to get a lot of rain with these. They are easily confused with those alto cumulus clouds, but don't do that. Even though they may look very similar, it has to do with where those bases are. Next we have the stratocumulus clouds. These are low and lumpy clouds again. They appear in rows and patches. If you've ever been to Florida, a lot of times these types of clouds will appear over the beaches. Or if you've been out on the coast, you'll see these appear in the afternoon. It doesn't necessarily always mean that it's going to rain, but you'll still see those. So in 2018, I took a picture of some of these stratocumulus clouds that formed over Harden on my way home from work. It's kind of neat to see the formation. You can see the wind at those different elevations causes the, the shape of the clouds to change, and it was almost ropey. So these are the two that I don't want you to confuse, the stratocumulus and the altocumulus. The stratocumulus are the low ones, and the altocumulus are the higher ones. These guys bring rain. These do not. Next on our low clouds, we have the nimbostratus. These are the dark gray, wet looking clouds. When you open your curtains up and you look outside and you're like, ooh, it's a drizzly day, I don't want to go out there. That's probably a nimbostratus cloud. They are associated with continuous precipitation, such as drizzle, rain, snow, and it's almost always light. So it's hardly ever a heavier rain. These are very low-lying clouds, even though their tops can exceed that 10,000 feet mark. This nimbostratus is going to give poor visibility due to the rain and the fog that's associated with it, and it can sometimes break apart in the wind, and those are generally called wall clouds. So those are the scary looking ones. And there we can see little bits and pieces of the clouds that the wind is breaking off and you see them floating around down below. But notice the flat bottoms. The next type of low cloud we'll look at is a stratus cloud. Remember stratus means layer. They're uniform, they're gray clouds, and they will cover the whole sky. It often resembles fog, but it doesn't reach the ground, so you can still see the tops of the trees. Usually you're going to find some light precipitation falling from this. It could be drizzles or it could be flurries. Next we have our vertically developed clouds. These cloud bases can stretch anywhere from 1,000 to 5,000 feet all the way up to 5,000 to 80,000 feet. They're comprised of water and ice. So the first type of vertically developed cloud is a cumulus. They come in a variety of shapes. These are the big puffy cotton ball looking, I'm going to make a shape out of that cloud type cloud. They generally have sharp outlines and they're puffy. Their base is light colored. It's sometimes gray. They have detached clouds and have dome-like tops. They come in pretty much all shapes and sizes. They will show slight vertical growth. We call those cumulus cumulus. They are fair weather clouds. When you see a sky full of these types of clouds, that means it's good weather. It's nothing to worry about. Here you can see in Higginsville, in 2018, I took some pictures of some cumulus clouds. There we've got some high cirrus clouds, but then we've got some nice low cumulus clouds forming. So we see that combination. Those all generate nice weather, so we have nothing to be concerned about. So those cumulus humulus are the fair weather clouds. They have those nice gray bottoms. They are very white on top. They have a high albedo percentage. But then we have 
their cousin, the cumulus congestus cloud, which is the towering cumulus cloud. These guys, as they're zooming along, picking up all that warm, moist air, they're continuously growing. The cumulonimbus cloud is a continuously growing cumulus cloud. This is a thunderstorm cloud. The bases can start as low as 2,000 feet, but the tops can grow to 40,000 feet and much higher. Their vertical growth depends in part on those updrafts that are bringing that warm, moist air up into the system and the downdrafts inside the thunderstorm. So here we can see that nice anvil shape that we're, we're used to seeing these types of clouds. Notice their size. They're generally quite large. Here's some more pictures. This one's in Miami. I had a really neat video that I was working on trying to get uploaded. I stood in my yard and I could actually see the cumulus clouds as they were growing. You could watch it grow. The top piece right here is once those clouds reach that tropopause point and they hit it, they can burst through. And once they burst through, that's what this top anvil piece is. That's the tropopause. So there's not as much wind and weather there. The molecules are different. And so it's kind of like blowing the lid off of a boiling pot of water. This one's really neat because you can see it just literally exploded. There was a lot of energy inside this thunderstorm cloud. And this little tower here is still growing. And this one exploded. And you can see that into that tropopause area. And again, you can see that here. So terms that we use to describe the clouds, one of them is anvil, the flat anvil top of a tall cumulus cumulonimbus cloud shows the movement of the thunderstorm by by the direction the anvil is pointing. So that's what an anvil looks like. And this is what an anvil cloud looks like. It is moving in this direction from right to left because that's the direction the anvil is pointing. So if you're driving along and you see one of these clouds and you can see it pointing that direction, you shouldn't worry about, oh, am I going to run into it? You may, by the time you get to it, run into the tail end. But if you're looking at a giant cloud like this and you don't see the anvil ends, that means you're either driving into it or you're driving away from it. Next we have these castellanus, those castle or tower-like vertical extensions found on cumulus clouds. See how they look like the little towers on a castle? Those are kind of neat to see. Those clouds, for whatever reason, just found a little low pressure area and they built and built and built and they broke through. And they almost look like little stalks of cauliflower. Some unusual clouds that you might see, one of them is a lenticular cloud. These are shaped like UFOs that hover over the top of a mountain. So they form as moist air crosses over that elevated area. So as it goes up and it comes down, once it hits the top of the mountain, that air ramps up, hits that cooler air, condenses, and then comes back down. And it leaves that moisture there. So it creates these little weird looking layered lens-like clouds. So Mount Fuji is notorious for creating these lenticular clouds. They're not super common, but they actually are at Mount Fuji. Some other types that you might see are these pileus clouds, which just look like a little thin scarf over the top of the tall clouds. So you can see that one there pretty clear. This one's a little tougher. Just looks like the very tip of it. This forms as moist air is deflected up and over the top of an existing cumulus or cumulonimbus cloud. And when that happens, it's much like the, the lenticular cloud. It just leaves that, that trace of a cloud right there. The next one, these are funny looking clouds. They're called mammatus. They're pouch-like sacs that hang underneath the bottom portion of a cumulonimbus cloud. So they're named that because they look like the mammary glands of, say, a cow. So they form as the sinking air remains cooler than the surrounding air and the strong winds give them this really rounded udder like appearance. So they have that funny looking shape on the bottom side. In May in Cameron, Missouri, they actually did spot some of these mammatus clouds, which was not a very common thing. So that was kind of neat that they got pictures of it. Next is a contrail. It's short for condensation. It is not the government. They are not trying to spray you with things, I promise. All it is is 
as jet aircraft engines are combusting, because that's how they go, their jet fuel combusts in their engine, some of what comes out of there forms this little short trail behind them. And it's just high ice and water clouds that form from the vapor and the exhaust particles. That's all that is. And then it takes a while because they're up so far for them to kind of dissipate out and disappear. Some severe weather clouds that we have to look at include the wall cloud, which is a low-hanging cloud that rotates and spins in a counterclockwise direction from a cumulonimbus cloud. Tornadoes will sometimes drop down and form from a wall cloud, not always, but sometimes. So generally, if they tell you to watch out for wall clouds, this is what they're talking about. Another type of cloud is this shelf cloud or a roll cloud. And this happens when cool sinking air from a thunderstorm reaches out across the land. And they look very, very scary, but really all it is, it's just that cool air sinking. And then they will sometimes have that rounded appearance as it's, as it's rolling like that, where they get their name from. So towering cumulus clouds can produce hailstones. This was sent to me by um, a friend of mine in Smithville, Missouri. They had hailstones one May. And those hailstones, actually, you can see they, they conglomerated and they form this giant chunk like this. So what happens with a hailstorm is in these big tall clouds, in this updraft, that precipitation goes so high up into the atmosphere it will actually freeze. And so it'll form a small chunk of ice. As it comes back down, it's still inside the cloud. It'll sometimes melt. It'll pick up some more precipitation. And then the updrafts will catch it if they're strong enough and it'll throw them back up into the cloud. So the more times that it gets thrown up into the cloud, the larger the hailstone. So you can see there's kind of like a, a dark center here. If you ever look at a hailstone, and I don't recommend doing it in the middle of the storm because they will hit you and hurt, but if you go pick them up and look at them, you can actually see the layers that form on the hailstone. If it's a big enough storm, they can create large softball sized hailstones that are just a conglomerate of all these melted ones that have gone up and down inside the storm. So here's another picture of that shelf cloud reaching out as that cool air hits the warm air. There's a big scary looking one and it's scary just because we can see daylight out here but it's all shadowed because this cloud is so dense. So summing things up we can see the different types of clouds here. We can see our vertically developed thunderstorm cloud as it reaches that high point it's going to stop growing when it hits that tropopause. When we report sky conditions we report them in eighths. So automated surface observing system only sees clouds up below 12,000 feet. That's called the ASOS and we'll look at some of that in class. Um, when you're reporting, if they say it's clear, that means there are no clouds present in the sky. If they say there's few, that means one-eighth to two-eighths, or one-fourth, of the whole sky is covered. If it's overcast, that means the whole sky is covered. So that's what those terms mean when they're talking about what the conditions are going to be like today. So if they say it's partly cloudy, that means there's few, few to scattered. So there is an app on your phone that you can download, whether it's from Android or from Apple. Um, it's through the University of Oklahoma, which is one of the best schools in the country for weather science. So if you're interested in meteorology and you want to go to college for it, I would recommend probably going there. So this app, this is taken off of the internet, but my phone looks the exact same. You will actually select the report type and it'll give you a choice of reporting whether it's no weather, it could be snowing, it could be sleeting, it could be raining, it could be high damaging winds, all kinds of different things. And you submit that report and the University of Oklahoma, NOAA, and NASA all work together to help improve our weather reporting systems that are in existence right now. And so that helps you become a scientist and help further the field of meteorology. So satellite observation of clouds can give us pictures of the top sides of clouds, but we're not normally used to seeing the top sides of clouds, so that doesn't tell us a whole lot. 
but for people that are trained to know what they're looking for, they're looking at the equator at the same rate as the Earth spins. Generally, the geostationary satellites stay about 22,000 miles above the Earth's surface, and they're continuously monitoring one location on the planet. They will then go and they will take different GPS pictures and they will compile them together and create kind of like a collage picture. And that's how they track those big storm systems. The visible imagery, lights reflected off of the clouds, and this is only available when the sun's out, so it doesn't do us any good at nighttime. But thicker clouds will actually reflect more. So you can kind of see it's going through these thin clouds, but it's reflecting off of this hurricane cloud. So thicker clouds reflecting more will give us a picture that's very white. These are very clear and concise pictures, so we can track things like hurricanes and tropical storms very easily.